Welcome back to Beginning ASP.NET Core 3.0. This section is titled How ASP.NET MVC Works. This video is on routing in MVC. In this video, we will cover routing basics, constraints and default values, as well as URL generation. So let's get started. The default route template, as seen here on line 78 of startup.cs in our Hello World app, controller equals home slash action equals index slash nullable ID and can be seen here. This means that there is an index action within a file called homecontroller.cs. It knows this by convention that controller equals home defines a class called homecontroller, and on that homecontroller class is a method called index. This is called conventional routing. We will talk about attribute routing in the next video. Most people should start with the default route because it is descriptive, readable, and meaningful. As we saw in the first section though, Default files take precedence over MVC routing because they are matched first in the middleware pipeline. Let's take out the default document that we added in section 1. The default route template can handle the root or slash request because of the default parameters for each of the controller and the action parts of the route. This is why when we request slash or root, it goes to the home controller and the index action. These are called default values. You can add additional routes to this by having the more specific routes listed before the more generic routes. It's probably best to leave the default route in there and add additional ones above it. Reserved words that cannot be used as route names or parameters include action, area, controller, handler, and page. You can add constraints on the route's values, such as id colon int, if you want to specify one route for an integer id or another for a GUID, for example, but you should not use this for input validation. Constraints does not equal validation. Continue to do input validation on your controller action. A mismatched constraint results in a 404 not found, not a 400 bad request like you should respond with. Let's add a route for a blog. Blog URLs, in this case, are slash my blog slash id colon int. To do that, Right before our default route, let's add a blog route. As you can see in the default route, map route takes a name and a template, but in this route we're also going to add defaults. We're going to say that the ID is an integer. And then we're going to take some defaults. The defaults in this case is an anonymous object. We're going to specify that the controller is blog, and by convention it will look for a blog controller class. And on that blog controller it will look for an action, and in this case we're going to call it story. That's it for the startup class. Save your file. Now we need to create a controller. We'll cover controllers in, in detail later on in this section. But for now, we're just going to create a simple controller that returns the ID. In the controllers folder, right click, select new file, and call it blogcontroller.cs. Then add the following code. The controller class can be found in the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC namespace. Add a using statement for that. That's it. Press F5 to begin debugging. Your application will compile and start up. Our welcome screen appears. In the URL, navigate to my blog slash 123 and the number 123 appears on the screen. Because we told the system that it has to be an integer, if you enter something that isn't an integer, we get a status code of 404 because the page could not be found. In a real app, we would use this ID to get the corresponding blog entry from a model and return it to the view to display. URL generation is the opposite action of routing. It takes the route and generates a URL instead of a URL generating a route. Routing uses endpoint routing to represent endpoints in the application. We can generate a link by injecting a link generator into our home controller. Let's take a look at how to do this. Open up homecontroller.cs. 
In the constructor, let's add a link generator. Link generator can be found in the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core routing namespace. Add a using statement for that, and then save off that link generator in a private field. Great. Now let's use it. Let's create a new action called link that returns an iAction result. Right below index, let's add another method that returns an iAction result, and it's called link. In here, we will generate a link. So take our link generator, and in this case, we're going to get a path by the action name. In this case, the action name is privacy, and it's on the home controller. Now let's take a look at the link that was returned. This will just print the link out to the user interface. Press F5 to begin debugging, and navigate to home slash link, and slash home slash privacy appears on the screen. It's that easy to generate a URL based on the action and the controller. In this video, we looked at the routing basics, constraints and default values, as well as URL generation.